In this presentation, we're going to go through some of the categories and tips about judging the Western Pleasure Horse. So, just as we judge all the various other classes, we look at the hierarchy of judging, and we're going to go through, kind of starting off here, as far as what are the order of importance of the different criteria that we will use to judge the Western Pleasure Horses. So here's basically a list of what they are, and for the very first um, and very most important thing is going to be the correctness. The correctness that the horse goes through the Western Pleasure class has to be the very most important. So that's going to start off with that he does do each gate correctly, and we know that the the walk is a four beat gate, the jog is a two beat gate, it's a two beat diagonal gate, and the lope should be a three beat gate. And so they need to do those gates correctly. Um, first and foremost before we evaluate quality and degree of difficulty. Also as far as one of the most important things is that they do meet the basic requirements of the class, regulations and rules of whatever the class is set up for for whatever association you are judging in. So when we look at our pleasure horses, again as far as the hierarchy of of judging, the next um, biggest factor is the quality. Okay, that's come second. And so quality is looking at are they performing the gates according to the standards of excellence as described um, for the class. Many of your rule books now will go through and describe these um, what's excellence and higher quality of the various gates and what it takes to go through the class. So it's overall gracefulness. Do they go through the class with a relaxed expression? We'll look and evaluate the horse's top line and the overall presentation, how soft his feet hit the ground, the consistency, length of stride are all things that are going to come into play when we're evaluating the quality factor, um, which is the second level of our hierarchy of judge. Remember, head set is basically the flexion of the horse's nose. It says he carries his nose in or out. Head carriage is the height that he carries his head. Uh, does he carry it up or down? And we'll talk and show some illustrations of these as we move through. All right, then the last area in our hierarchy of judging is the degree of difficulty. And this really is going to be the very least important. We have to make sure first they're correct um, and have quality, and then we will evaluate and give credit to the degree of difficulty. So when we're looking at this, we're going to look at the pace and the speed that allows for the correctness and the quality of all of the different gates as the horse goes through the class. So the walk should be a ground covering and free, um, to, and that a high degree walk is one going to be is one that's going to be ground covering and free. The lock, the jog, or the lobe should have a slow rhythm um, without sacrificing the correctness or the quality. So those horses that can do either the jog or the lope in a slow manner and still do it correctly are going to be rewarded for a higher degree of difficulty. However, if that horse is slow and he sacrifices the correctness or negatively impacts the quality, then that's going to be an incorrect or poor performance. And so this is coming back from the standpoint that just because they're the slow horse out there does not mean that they're the correct horse. However, one that ones that can do it slow with a good rhythm and flow are going to be doing it at a higher degree of difficulty, and that should be rewarded. All right, so to get into these a little bit more, we'll first kind of address some of the things looking at the functional correctness. Okay, and that's really going out the meeting requirements of the class, regulations of class. Pretty much across the board, these are going to be similar across your different rule books, but again, it's important to read those and make sure that, um, you know, that you're correct as far as whatever association you might be reading, uh, judging for. So first off with a fun functionally correct horse is that he travels at the prescribed gate at a walk or jog or a lope and naturally is picking up and maintaining the correct lead. Next, we want to make sure that he has a correct footfall sequence for whatever gait that he is that he's in, and I'll get to that here in a little bit more detail here in just a moment. Also, they have to reverse to the inside of the arena in our Western classes. There are some English classes that they reverse towards the rail, and that is incorrect for our Western classes. Also, another element of the class is that they back up. Kind of the standard anymore um, is that folk, is that judges will have the horses back on the rail, and they do need to look and make sure that every horse does back up. Um, so it's up to the judge's discretion if they back them on the rail or back them to the, at the in, in the middle of the pen. 
Okay, so be functionally correct again. We've got our basic, our four basic gates that the horse are going to do, and make sure that you watch watch these and evaluate that the walk really is a four beat gait. You should be able to watch and see each of the four feet strike the ground, and kind of at the speed should be a minimum, a medium. We don't want them to crawl excessively slow. We don't want them to be rammy and go too fast. Just a nice, soft, quiet, easy going walk. The jog is really a two beat gait. It's in a two beat diagonal gait where the inside front and outside hind strike the ground together um, and vice versa. So we need to watch and make sure that he, the horse is hitting his diagonals. And this should be a somewhat slow gait done for a higher degree of difficulty. The lope is a rhythmic three beat um, gait where you have um, the one hind foot step down, the diagonal leg step down, and then the other front leg step down. And this is a this is the gait that sometimes we do have problems with. Well, I'd say both the jog and the lope of horses not doing it correctly and not doing it either as a two-beat jog or a, three, a true three-beat gait, three-beat lope. So next we're going to enter an area of hierarchy of uh, judging. We're going to look for the quality of movement. And this does come from experience and you will have a variety of differences of quality movement depending on the level of shows that, shows that you judge and, um, and that. So it's important to kind of understand and be able to reward good quality of movement when you do see it. So kind of what I learned one time um, really to start looking at quality movement is really you're going to mainly you're going to start off looking at the horse's legs and we're going to look at them from the bottom up basically from the ground up and from the rear forward and these are kind of good guidelines because if the legs are correct then generally the top line is going to be correct also because a horse cannot hardly it's difficult for them to move in a good quality of movement underneath and have issues with his headset and his head carriage so remember look at the legs look from the bottom up we're looking to see is he cadence is he meeting his, his um, diagonals is he doing that three beat lope and those types of things and from the rear forward shows you what kinds of engagement and push and drive from behind that horse would have So when we're talking good quality of movement, the horses should be collected. And um, that means they should be, another person one time gave, told me the definition of collection was the imprisonment of a horse's mind between the rider's hands and legs. And they should not be overdone, but they should be where they push up and drive. Impulsion is going to come from behind. It's going to come from that horse's hawk. And they should reach up and, link, and, and, and push from behind, particularly when they lope but you will also see it as they jog and you can see some of this even as they walk when you see some of those horses track up deep behind. Length of stride we want to see are the equal distance. Um, the distance here should be the same here uh, and those types of things and making sure that their stride is equal on both sides on the inside and the outside. Cadence is going to be the football sequence sequence, and making sure that those horses do do the correct number of beats and gait, beats for whatever gait they're particularly in. Uh, symmetrical, um, symmetrical side also is looking at is the horse even on both sides and so making sure that he's not short in front or short behind in mean, those types of things. So here's a few pictures that I found. Um, these are taken from Horse and Rider magazine in 2014. They kind of give some pretty good illustrations. Again, it's difficult always to see some of this in still pictures. However, you can get a little bit of a snapshot or a, an idea of some of the things with the quality of movement. So here's a horse at the jog. Okay, so we're looking at uh, the inside, in, outside hind, inside front should strike the ground together and vice versa. And all of this goes into play and then the top line should come into play. So we want this horse to track up behind, have a very, be flat with his front leg, have a lot of drive from behind, which tends to also allow that horse to be elevated in his shoulders and have, the, have a very comfortable and natural type headset and head carriage. This horse has a good headset, his nose is bumped out just a little bit, so his head carriage is very appropriate. Here's the same horse where he's been a little bit over collected and overdone and you can see that he's more restricted. His nose is behind the vertical, his head is down and his gait, his legs are not, don't have the natural rhythmic um, free flowingness as what he has over here. Granted we're at two different stages and places of his stride but another telltale sign that folks will say is that the nose goes to the toe and this horse um, is restricted with his nose and his front foot is not going to have the length that it has when the horse is going in a much more um, happier and, and not so overdone manner.
Here's the same horse that lope and the same kinds of things where this horse he's collected but not overdone where he has some drive from behind, he's got some reach with his front leg. We talk about a flat knee and this horse is very flat with his knee. We also like to see that the hind leg comes up deep underneath himself and he doesn't leave his hocks out behind. And you can see this horse has a good expression on his head. He's very nice with his top line. In contrast, this is a horse that has been bunched up uh, so more restrictive. So again, the, the pole is lower than what, where we want it to be. The nose is bumped back behind the vertical a bit. And you can also see, although they're in a different stage of their stride, he's more restricted in his movement and doesn't have um, the big open stride that we see in the other horse over here. So it's always difficult to see with still pictures, but they do, these two do give you a little bit of a good idea. Okay, we can't get away from talking about Western Pleasure without the whole headset, head carriage type thing. And I honestly believe over the years um, things are much improved with the headset and head carriage. But it is something that a lot of people still focus on. So I think I probably need to, to go through and just touch on it just a bit. So remember that head carriage, okay, that the neck should be parallel or slightly above parallel to the ground, the pole level or slightly above the withers. So carriage remembers how they're carrying their head up, up or down. And it should be pretty much either level out or bumped up just a little bit. In contrast, head set is how they set their nose in or out. So the head set, the horse's nose should be slightly in front of the vertical um, from the pole to the ground. You know, it could be straight up and down or bumped out just a little bit, but not excessively. Okay, here's some um, illustrations that you might say that can, that can go ahead and give you some ideas and, and um, just kind of diagrams of looking at the headset and head carriage of some different horses. So this is one we're going to say has a relatively acceptable headset and head carriage. If you kind of look at his withers here, where his pole is and where his nose is, um, he's going in a very relaxed kind of manner. So it's, it, that, that would be considered acceptable. This would be a high head carriage where the horse is elevated higher from his withers than what we'd like him to be. Some classes this is perfectly acceptable. However, in a pleasure class, we do want it to be a little bit more level and not quite that quite as high up as what that is. This, on the contrast, is going to be a, considered a low head, low head carriage. Remember, we're looking at where they're carrying it. And so if we look at his withers, he's going to be just a little bit below and, and more undesirable of what we're looking for for today's pleasure horses. This is one where uh, his head set, okay, where his set his nose. He, not only is his horse's head excessively high, but his nose is behind the vertical, which would be unacceptable. And on our final one here, um, this also, his head set is not desirable because you can see that his nose is really bumped out. So he's not showing much brokenness, not showing much collection. And we would like this not, doesn't have to be exactly perpendicular, but a little bit more like what this horse is. This horse would probably be a little bit less broke, um, potentially, kind of bracing onto the bit and not have as much give to his mouth as what we would like to see. So here's just a couple pictures of a couple young men showing some horses that I felt have some very modern and very nice with their headset and their head carriage. Okay, um, You know you always have to look at the still picture and the angle where the pictures are. But both these horses um, really are relatively level. Their noses are pretty much where we'd like them to be, showing a lot of good expression. They're both on a very soft rein and showing not only good headset and head carriage, but appear to have some good quality of movement to, to them. Here's a couple of horses that might be a little bit different. This one is kind of hard to see, hard to say. Um, this horse's nose is either straight up and down and maybe tipped just a little bit or maybe a hair behind. So this is one if I was judging in a class, I'd kind of just keep my eye on this individual and to see, you know, does she, does she get worse? Does she get better in those types, some of those types of things? Because this one might be a little bit borderline, but then again, it's not really offensive and it might be fine. This horse here, you have to understand that some of you will be judging different breeds of horses, and so different kinds of things are going to be um, expected of some different breeds. So this is an Arab or an Arab type horse, and again, his head carriage is going to be a little bit higher. He's got a little bit more arch to it. He, his head set, his nose is bumped back just a little bit, and most of us would still, even though he is, um, they is um, showing in an Arab division, would like to see that nose a little bit more more perpendicular, more up and down. 
Okay, one other thing that I did want to mention a little bit um, going in as we're ev evaluating our pleasure horses is their overall attitude because it does come in when we're looking at some of the great higher degree of difficulty and looking to see, you know, who is going to be the happy horse going down the rail. And so with the attitude, we're really looking at the response of the horse's riders, uh, the response of the horse to the rider's cues and his mannerisms throughout the class. I always like to say horses, you know, should really kind of look like they're going through on autopilot and be very happy um, and not take a lot of excessive work from the rider to get them to go through and do their job. So some other things with ad attitude, we'll look at the responsiveness, okay? Do they have smooth and prompt gait transitions? Do they reverse and back without a lot of cues, without a lot, a lot of um, assistance from the rider? And, you know, the very best ones are really, really ridden off those rider's legs where things look almost like those horses going, are going on autopilot. Mannerisms, do they look straight through the bridle? Are they willing to perform? Are they a happy horse? Um, you know, or on the verse, on the opposite side, are they mad? Are their ears pinned? Are they gapping at their mouth? And some of those types of things. One other thing to look at also is bit contact, which is goes along with our length of reins. And so we'd like to have a horse on a reasonably loose, re loose reins or very light contact. Some of this is going to vary a lot between our horses on their brokenness and what a, the exhibitor is comfortable to do. But to increase the degree of difficulty, uh, some of this will come to play. So I've got a few pictures here of some horses on do some different kinds of bit contact. This first one I think he's appropriate. Um, he hasn't really increased his degree of difficulty, but he is going on a very soft, very trust, trusting kind of rein. Um, and so I would just put him kind of as an average kind of kind of presentation. In contrast, this horse, the rider has a little bit more confidence. This horse's head set and head carriage are fine, and he is going a bit on a bit of a, a more drape of rain. If this horse can go through and perform the class at a good degree of difficulty, he's going to get a higher score um, as he is going through the class on a higher degree of difficulty because he is going with less contact um, from the rider. And we have this young lady here, again, another horse that's probably maybe not um, as broke or she's not as trusting. So she's going through her class with a bit more rain con contact, holding just a bit more. And again, we don't know why. We don't know if she doesn't trust him or if there's a reason. We just know that he's going with a bit more contact. So as far as I'm looking on degree of difficulty, you know, even a horse like this, I'm going to give him a little bit more credit than this, also depending on how things go through the rest of the class. And this is also um, another very, very well-known horse. This is a certain Vino. And sure, he's going on quite a bit of a drape of rain, quite a bit of a loose rain. And some might say, whoa, that's a little bit too much. However, um, if you have a horse as talented as this and can go through the class with very minimal um, contact that is drastically increasing the degree of difficulty, therefore um, you're gonna, you should reward credit if they can go through it on a high de degree of difficulty with good quality of movement and being extremely correct. So those are just some different tips as far as judging Western Pleasure horses. It's very difficult to go through it without some video so you can actually see the way the horses move. But I wanted to give you some, some of the tips and some of the categories and things that you might look at and how to pick some things apart. The National Snafflebit Association is one group that does oversee um, and set a lot of the guidelines for judging and evaluating Western Pleasure horses um, at various different levels and categories. And so they are a very good resource to go through Additionally, most of your rule books are going to have their specific rules for judging the Western Pleasure class.